Super-powered people are inexplicably rising from the streets. And there's a big problem. Too many supervillains, not enough superheroes. People are dying, and cops are dying twofold. Humanity is underpowered, and good people are suffering untold tragedies trying to stem the flow. Beat cop Leo Winters is one of those struggling to make a difference, and the solution just might come in the form of two lowlifes with a dark secret. When there are only villains, being a hero makes you a suicide risk. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. This time we're talking Boom Studios Suicide Risk Volume 1. This was an unexpected treat. This was a complete blind purchase. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but when you find it at such a ridiculous price, really, cover price, $9.99, and I would at least do a video for you guys whether I liked it or not. So, yeah, what did I think of Boom Studios' Suicide Risk? Well, it's very different than what I was expecting, especially because I went by the cover image, which you can see here. I thought this was this gritty police drama, sort of like a, like a Sheriff of Babylon type thing from Tom King. No, it's something completely different. It's actually quite fun. It's pretty badass and I think you guys are going to enjoy the heck out of it. Basically, in a nutshell, there are super powered people in this alternate world and not enough heroes. Every people, every super powered individual that comes up turns to uh, evil, whether it's because of a social norm or whether it's a psychological thing that is to be explored or analyzed. But uh, that's just the norm in this world. And there are very few superheroes, uh, practically none. And the ones that are, are either converted into villains or killed or captured or something happens to them. So the police is really having a tough time. And in comes one of the best opening scenes for a comic book that I've read in a while. I really enjoyed this opening act where you have this uh, cop, Leo Winters, being interviewed as to what happened. And then via flashback, we're being told what actually happened when he was trying to stop the supervillains from pulling off a heist and uh, taking some hostages and all that stuff. One of their part, one of his partners uh, gets gravely injured. Other cops die, and civilians get in the way. This was action-packed, top to bottom. Great cast of characters, very diverse roster. No one feels the same, and that is actually really good. In a massive world of cape and cowls that we read constantly, sometimes it all becomes a blur. Yes, you understand the heroes, and you understand what they're dealing with. Most of the B, C, and D listers get lost in the shuffle especially the civilian characters. Now with a book like this, like I just mentioned, it's very diverse. You've got uh, Leo's family of Indian descent, and you've got other characters of different nationalities, and it really spies it up and brings this world to life. Mike Carey does a really good job of balancing the tonality between super heroics and gritty cop drama, because at the end of the day, this is sort of... Uh, yeah, this is just a police story, a crime story, that just so happens to have superpowered individuals. Some of the plot elements are borrowed from different comic books and different movies and stuff that you might have already uh, read about or seen, but they're done really well. They are highly complemented by the work of Elena Casagrande. The art is spectacular, one of the biggest selling points. Like I mentioned, the cover uh, fooled me because I was thinking it was going to go down a very dark, grim and gritty route, and it's actually quite a colorful book. I love the character of Leo Winters and his expressions as well as everybody else's is uh, really fun to look at. You get to see uh, the gruesomeness when there's an attack and you get to see this fantastic side when characters are using their superpowers and Elena does a fantastic job of bringing that to life on paper. I really enjoyed the artwork. So yeah, Suicide Risk Volume 1 is a book that is a little methodical, it's smart, it's a little bit dark, 
but it knows when to have fun and when to show you a good time, even though the subject matter might be a little rough sometimes. But uh, stick with it, because I think you're going to like it. The first book only has the first four issues, and I am in. Unfortunately, out of the six volumes, uh, volume five will be the hardest to get, because it is extremely out of print, and I cannot find it anywhere. So if you guys know where I can get it, please let me know down below or write to my email um, listed down in the notes. Uh, I, I, I don't really understand why Boom would keep this title uh, out of print. I think it's a fantastic book that everybody should try out. If you like your cop drama, if you like uh, real issues with characters dealing with the consequences of crime and when you are empowered and what you do with those powers and the responsibility, there's a very famous saying in comic books and I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So yeah, with this great power that all of these guys have, there must come a bigger responsibility. And this book exemplifies that quite brilliantly with the character of Leo, who he isn't the best character. He's not a saint. He has his problems, but he's trying to uh, avenge his friend af after what happened in that heist uh, supervillain throwdown and he is going to do some detective work and get down to the bottom of it. So yeah, Suicide Risk, a really cool start. Uh, you do get to find out where these superpowers come from, and I don't want to spoil it, but I kind of hinted at it at the beginning of the video. Our main hero gets a major upgrade, and there's more to it in the following issues. When you're reading Suicide Risk, uh, there's a point in the story where you gotta take a look at everything and go, Wow, this is really trippy. This is uh, a bizarre world where uh, superheroes don't really exist, you know? So it presents a real dilemma as to how the hell do you fight off supervillains when all you've got are cops and regular human beings and you gotta level the playing field either you find their weakness or you do something drastic and i think the book uh, really does a good job of examining those issues and how uh... the, the ramifications i should say of uh... supervillains and the destruction that these powers can leave behind. When I do my second video on Suicide Risk, I will review from Volume 2 onwards all in one big package, spoiler filled and all that stuff, so look forward to that eventually. But for now, just know that, you, like I mentioned, if you want this dark, gritty, uh, super heroic book with uh, real world issues and complex characters and great writing too from Mike Carey, excellent artwork, then yeah, Suicide Risk Volume 1, I highly, highly recommend it. Tell me down below if you like this book, if you've read it, if not, let me know what is your favorite cop drama, comic book related, not TV, your favorite cop drama. Let me know down below as well. Guys, thank you so much. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform. And if you've got a question, if you've got any sort of inquiry, just write to my email, aweekandgeekthem at gmail.com, and I will happily answer back as soon as humanly possible. So guys, thank you once again, and I'll catch all of you on our next episode. Mike Carey does a really good... Mike Carey? Does Mike Carey write this? Yeah.